Take it away. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Victor Castro. I am a data scientist at Master No Brigham, uh, and I'm also in the Recover Data Resource Core. And I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, transforming REDCap to I2B2, um, with our primary motivation being uh, data collected for Recover. Um, and my colleague uh, Nich Watanasan this morning um, presented this slide um, talking about the different data sources from Recover. Um, so I don't have to explain all of Recover, which is really helpful. Um, but just briefly, Recover is a, a large observational cohort study um, for studying uh, long COVID or post acute sequelae of COVID 19. Uh, large multi center study that's uh, uh, integrating. Um, so Recover is integrating uh, data from, from different sources uh, and including biospecimens, EHR data, uh, digital health. Uh, but what I'm going to be talking about today is about uh, data integrated from REDCap, which is different than OMOP and Picornet um, in that it is primary data collection. So you got to flip your mind from secondary data collection that we use from the EHR or in insurance claims, and this is data sets that are specifically collected for research uh, as part of Recover. Uh, and the way um, that is usually done among many sites is using uh, uh, tools called for in the bucket of electronic data capture. Um, and Recover is, I can't switch. Oh, good. Um, so Recover is using a very popular tool called REDCap, um, which stands for Research Electronic Data Capture. Um, it is a tool developed at Vanderbilt University. Um, it is free uh, and licensed by them. Um, there's no cost. Uh, it's all web-based. Um, it is very secure, which was important uh, for Recover, which had some government security requirements. Um, and uh, it uh, is accessible uh, in the open internet uh, and compatible with all web browsers. And importantly, it supports uh, participants to complete the surveys directly. So uh, uh, participants in the study can use their, their, their computer or their mobile device to enter uh, and fill out data. And uh, Recover has quite a few surveys, uh, very complicated surveys. Um, and REDCap also supports uh, quite a bit of customization around how you present the questions, uh, validation for the data entry, uh, branching logic uh, and uh, different ways to manipulate how the surveys look to make it friendly and make it easier for people to fill out. Um, and there's really no limit on uh, how many questions you can present. Uh, and then there's also a process for modifying a, um, uh, the forms and, and the instruments as you go, uh, which is important because Recover is the type of study that is constantly evolving as we learn more about long COVID and more about COVID-19. There have been new uh, questions asked. There has been new uh, procedures that are required for data collection. Uh, and then the really important thing that is for integration for I2B2 is that REDCap supports uh, a really robust uh, API that lets you easily get the data out in either the user interface or programmatically uh, through a REST API. Um, and also has within REDCap has uh, built-in reporting. Um, all right. So um, this is a slide that describes the uh, kind of high level view of the Recover adult study. Uh, again, this is, is recruiting over 20,000 uh, participants, about 200 sites. And there is a very, really complicated longitudinal nature for the study. And there's different, a lot of different kinds of data collection. The colors here represent whether the data is collected um, by the study site versus the participants. Uh, and um, some of these, the purple ones are the participant uh, says, completes a survey and then the, the study site confirms it or the other way around. Uh, so there's a kind of a lot of different data inputs into REDCap. Um, I just show this slide to say it's very complicated <laughs> uh, in terms of a REDCap project. 
And here's an example of a form. Uh, the, one of the main uh, data collected for Recover is uh, uh, symptoms that the patient is reporting. And this is a, a sample of a, a grid, right? So it'll ask the patient, do you have these symptoms? Uh, yes, I have it now. Um, yes, I had it before I had COVID or after, or I still have it. And so there's, there's the questions, but there's also a dimension of time and, and the temporality. Um, and I should also say there's cases and people who have been infected and there's people who have not been infected as controls. Um, and this is kind of a high level view of what data looks like in REDCap, right? So this, uh, the data is longitudinal. So there are, um, there are forms, which are right here on the, on the things. And then on the, this, this column here, and then there's the events, which happen longitudinally over time. And when you fill that out, then you export the data. And this is what a, a REDCap data export looks like. So you'll recognize this as a wide file, which is different than I2B2, which we think as very tall files. Um, and that is kind of the, one of the main focuses of, of our transformation is going from wide to tall. Um, and, and, and so, for example, the recover adult file, if you exported the whole thing, um, there's basically one row per patient per event, and there's one column for each data item collected, and there are close to 8,000 data uh, elements uh, in the export. So 8,000 plus columns and a lot of rows. So, um, this is kind of our overview of our, the data pipeline. And so here we have REDCap uh, on the left there. And um, I, I put in, so I, I mentioned that REDCap is collecting participant surveys directly entered into uh, the web browser. The site research coordinators are entering data. The sites can actually also upload uh, CSV files into REDCap. So things like they're, they're uploading lab results that are done locally into uh, REDCap and they have to match the REDCap form design. There's extant cohorts, Mitch mentioned this earlier, that there are other, other uh, uh, studies that are also collecting data in REDCap and they are being uploaded into our REDCap. Um, and then there are also, uh, we have reading centers. So if, if a participant has an MRI, sometimes some of those MRIs are sent to a reading center to have a research read and they are also integrating um, and, and uploading data into REDCap. So it's, it's, it's direct data entry, but it's also uploading. And it's basically a way to primary, collect all the primary data. And then um, we have built a uh, REDCap to I2B2 ETL tool. That's an R data pipeline. Uh, and this is what I'm gonna be talking about in the next uh, couple of minutes. Uh, and so just overview, we, 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 we run that ETL. We pull the data from REDCap, we run the ETL, and then we put those into uh, staging uh, tables that look like I2B2 tables. Uh, and then we have a separate process that pulls all the other data together um, into one I2B2 instance to present the query tool, one unified query tool across all different data types. Um, so I, I wanna mention that the I2B2 core server code has had uh, functionality um, to integrate REDCap data. Uh, and you should check it out. Uh, it is, uh, I think it was released, I looked it up, it's in 1.7.12 in December 2019. Uh, and you could actually, with kind of minimal configuration, point it to the REDCap API, give it a security token that's generated by REDCap, uh, and it will sync, um, kind of a default sync of the uh, REDCap project into an I2B2 ontology. And it works well. Uh, it, it does have some limitations about, and, and you kind of have to use the default settings. Um, and so that's why we chose to do a, a more uh, asynchronous process. Uh, and so the main functions of this uh, REDCap to I2B2 ETL package, uh, our package, is to kind of work with our, our data pipeline and, and run things asynchronously so we can check them before we release them in production. Um, it also supports multiple REDCap projects into one I2B2 project. Um, we have, because Recover has an adult protocol, but it also has an autopsy protocol, a pediatric protocol, and, and a couple of other ones. Um, we also have a requirement to manage uh, the Recover participant ID as the Recover UUID. Uh, and so there's a built-in logic for that. Uh, it also supports uh, longitudinal events by storing the uh, appropriate columns in encounter mapping and visit dimension, so they could always be referred to back into REDCap data. Um, and then uh, Niche also mentioned this earlier, we also want to mo uh, customize the ontology that comes out of REDCap. And so we have a process for, uh, for 
customizing those on the ontology and keeping track of it because the projects are always changing. So we want to be able to make those customizations every time. Uh, and then uh, assigning start dates to events in REDCap, uh, customizing concept codes, uh, and then also modifying sometimes sometimes we want to modify the concepts. Uh, and this was important for the time point uh, that I mentioned. Um, this is briefly just how we what we cho the choices we make about the red cap data types into i two b two transformations. Uh, things kind of like obvious. Uh, when you have a radio box, it becomes a concept in the in the observation fact table. When there's a numeric text, it goes into unbound them. When there's dates, we put them in TBAL car, uh, and that enables uh, certain types of queries. So I hope we can see this. Um, so this is an example of the uh, transformation that is done and looks in how it looks in the ontology. So this is a section of the ontology that I've highlighted here. So there's a form in REDCap called Red, uh, Past Symptoms. Within that form, there is a section, and this is all one survey that a participant is filling out. So within that form, there's a section called recover past symptoms. And then we, there's a lot of questions in here. And so we group those questions. This is a customization that we made that's beyond REDCap that we customize, we group the questions ourselves into three different categories. And then there's um, a, the actual question, the feed, the, which we are called REDCap fields. These are the questions in REDCap. And then these are the answers. So this specifically is, uh, they're asking the patient, do you have post-exertional malaise at a follow-up visit? So this means after they've already had COVID at least three months. So, and then the question, the, the, the participant can ask, say, yes, I still have it in the, and I've had it in the last 30 days. And then we do a further breakdown to say, okay, if you had it in the last 30 days, how far from your COVID infection did you have this? And this, these numbers right here will show you how many people are responded at those different time points, which is really important for uh, studying uh, long COVID and uh, when onset happens and then when recovery happens. Uh, and here is a query that I've run uh, as an example to integrate all this data. Um, so I've run a query using the enrollment category. So these are patients that are enrolled into the study when they were uh, had acute COVID, um, that they still have it uh, at, a, at a follow up time point which I just showed you that uh, fatigue. And then we also have the biospecimens uh, inventory. So if you wanna see which of these patients or, or participants have a serum sample collected that can be used for research. Uh, and so this is integrating data collected by the site, data collected by the participant surveys, and then a uh, biospecimen, which is an entirely non red cap data, uh, data type. Uh, and then you could run the query and it runs in 12 seconds and you get 1,685 participants. So that's uh, that's the, the overview, and uh, I'm happy to answer uh, questions uh, after the panel or or uh, after the talk. And I just want to thank all the people that work on this uh, uh, in our team and been working on this over the last couple of years. So thank you.